Today I will be revisiting a topic I have done in a previous video about getting great looking stitching on the front and back of your project. In the previous video, the leather that I used was a bit difficult to tell the difference between the flesh side and the grain side, so there were some people who were confused. This video should clear all of that up. The stitching method I will show you today requires you to chisel your holes on the front and back pieces of leather separately before gluing them together. This is the method I've been using in all of my wallet making videos to join the inside and outside sections where the look of the stitching on the front and on the back are equally important. The method is a bit more complicated than simply chiseling completely through your project, but I think it gives the best looking results and is well worth the effort. So let's get started. The leather I'll be using to demonstrate the method today is this Butero leather in a purple colour. This darker purple is the grain side of the leather, and this lighter side is the flesh side. They both have very distinct colours, so it will be much easier to differentiate between them. The plan is to stick the two pieces of leather together with the grain side on the outside of both sides, like you would if you were making a wallet. Before starting, you need to make sure both pieces of leather are perfect reflections of each other with the same shape and side lengths. The shape can be straight lines with corners like this, or it could be a curved shape. As long as they can be aligned together, this method is going to work. Let's start by marking in stitching lines on both sides using dividers. The alignment of holes is critical in this method, so now I will plan in their positions. I will use these top corners as the reference points to later match both pieces when gluing them together. The first holes need to be the same distance away from the corner. I will do this by setting up the pricking irons with one prong sitting just off the edge. There are many ways to do this, and as long as they are the same distance, it will be fine. Press the pricking irons into the leather so you can mark in the holes. Place one prong in the previous set of holes to keep the holes evenly spaced and complete marking in the entire stitching line. Do the same for the second piece of leather, making sure that the holes are matching each other. Keeping both pieces side by side like this makes it easier to check the holes are matching. Now that all of the holes are planned, we can now punch them in. Punch in the holes for both pieces of leather, making sure to follow the planned hole position. The more prongs in your chisel, the easier it will be to keep your holes straight, so keep that in mind when purchasing a set. Now that the holes have been chiseled in, we can see that they are matching. When these two pieces of leather are glued together, the centers of both holes will align. However, when they are aligned, the slants of both pieces will be in opposite directions. These opposing slants will form an X shape where they meet at the center of each hole. Now I will glue the two pieces together. I am using contact cement, so I will apply glue to both pieces on the flesh side and give them a few minutes to dry. The glued pieces are now ready to stick together. To make sure that they are aligned, I will stick in the top corner first. Then holding the center section apart, stick on the second corner. Now I can make the center section come together, just making sure the edges are in line. Hammer down or press the edges together to ensure the pieces are fully bonded and now it is ready for stitching. I'll be using this 0.6mm Ritza 25 Tiger Thread in white colour, which will contrast nicely with the purple leather. I will be stitching starting on the hole nearest myself, and then stitching away. You can also do this in reverse by starting on the furthest hole and stitching towards yourself. In the end, the stitching will look the same and it's just a matter of personal preference. Now let's begin stitching. Pass one needle through the first hole. 
then pull on a thread until both ends are the same length. For the second hole, I will pass the right needle through the hole, then pull back on both threads, then pass the left needle through the furthest part of the hole. Lift and then loop the thread over the needle with your right hand, then pull the needle through. Apply tension to both ends to finish the first stitch. Note that when I pull on the threads, my right hand is pulling up and away from me, and my left hand is pulling down and towards me. This makes the thread sit in the correct part of the hole, and is very important if you want to get the stitches on the back slanting properly. Again, starting with the right needle, pass it through the hole. Then pull back on the threads and pass the left needle through the back. Lift and loop the thread over the left needle and then pull the needle through. Apply tension to complete the second stitch. If you do not pull the thread angled like this, the stitches will not be pushed to the edges of the hole, so the stitching may not end up being properly slanted. When you're stitching, make sure to apply firm but even tension on the threads so that all the stitches end up looking uniform. Continue the stitching until you reach the end of your stitching line. And now we can cut these threads. To finish off the stitching, I will cut both ends of the thread. And then, since this thread is polyester, I can melt the ends and press them down to lock them in place. Now let's have a closer look at the stitches. This is tiger thread, so the stitches already lay very flat without needing to hammer them down. You can see that the stitches have been positioned at the extreme limits of the hole. This is the effect from pulling the threads using those angles during stitching. Flipping over to see the reverse side, and again, it looks identical. In this method, there is no front side and back side, as they both look 100%, and this is what makes it so perfect to use for wallets. This stitching method is also good to use when working with thick leather, because if your leather is thick, you're going to have a hard time keeping your chisel exactly perpendicular, and any deviation will show up on the back side as messy. Also note that the smaller or thinner your hole is, such as when using pricking irons, it will make pulling your needle through the two layers of leather harder. Make sure that you're using the smallest needle that still matches your thread. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.